Center. It is the last Junior Jays Saturday, and there's a pair of Bautistas that are looking forward to a good day at the ballpark. Lots of kids on hand. It's always a great atmosphere. It's open air baseball here. Gorgeous Saturday afternoon, the last Saturday of the season. The Yankees are in town. This is the third game of a four game set. The last time the Blue Jays will see the Yankees this season. As we mentioned, there's always a lot of kids on hand. They're having a special day today. This is a Junior Jays wrap up party after this ball game. Blue Jays would love to get something going again, and they need a good start from Ricky Romero. The Yankees hitters broke out in a big way last night as they beat the Blue Jays 11 to 4. Top of the order is the captain, Derek Jeter, on this road trip for the season. He's hit very well, 346 average. That leads the American League in road batting average. And he has done a great job all season long, having one of his finest seasons at the age of 38. Suzuki Rodriguez Cano and Nick Swisher, the switch hitting first base, has done a great job at the plate and at first base. Curtis Granderson, Andrew Jones gets the start in right field. Eduardo Nunez gets Jeter the day off. He's at shortstop. Ricky Romero set to start his 32nd game of the season and final start of the season. That's three years in a row that Romero has had 32 starts for the Blue Jays. Fifth time that he has faced the New York Yankees this year. He's trying to beat them for the first time. Pitched much better last time out against the Yankees. Ricky Romero has not beaten the Yankees in his last seven starts. Misses with the first pitch down and away to Jeter. Derek Jeter, we mentioned he's the DH this afternoon. Jeter gets off his legs for half the game. For Jeter, this is his 25th start as the DH. It's a base hit. Derek Jeter starts things off with the Yankees. Single to left. Take a look at the defense. A little bit different defense in the outfield. Rajay Davis starts in left field with the left-hander Andy Pettit on the mound. Anthony Ghost is in center. Moises Sierra in right. Escobar and Echeverria team up up the middle. Laurie's at third. Jan Gomes gets to start at first. And Jeff Mathis is behind the plate. Uh, Blue Jays get a chance to look at uh, Danny Echeverria, just the fifth start of the season for Echeverria at second base. And Alex Anthopoulos was telling us last night that that might be an option for him next season. Kelly Johnson is a free agent at the end of this season. Uh, that will be a possibility. Ichiro Suzuki in the game last night had a pair of hits. He drove in a run and scored a run. Finished up the night two for five. But well foul. Suzuki will do that from time to time. He would turn on a pitch and try to hit it out of the ballpark. Hit a home run against the Blue Jays in Yankee Stadium. There's power in there. I, I've seen him take batting practice before and launch ball after ball into the stands. I think he could hit 20 home runs a year, 25 if he wants to. But he wouldn't hit for the type of average that he has in his career. Pulls this ball and it's just foul. Well, Jan Gomes almost touched that ball. He reached for it, but it was past him before it could really get fully extended. Had he made contact with it, it would have been a fair ball. Hey, he can play first base. Comes off there, and then the ball is to his glove side, but hooks foul down the right field line. He shows great range and very soft hands over there at first base. Ichiro Suzuki has a 429 average against Ricky Romero. He is 12 for 28. And he had that magic wand going again last night. He hit a double down the left field line just inside the bag at third. And he can literally hit the ball from foul line to foul line. Take it right out of that catcher's glove. Keeps his hands back and just punches it the other way with two strikes. There's a base hit to right. Moises Sierra comes in. Jeter stops at second back-to-back -back singles. And we have talked about this one-two punch. Top of the order. Boy, they can really set the table. They set it up for the Yankees. Let's take a look at the scouting report for Ricky Romero. Brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners helping homeowners. That fastball, he uses it 67% of the time. He's got to put it in a good spot against these Yankee batters. Use it to set him up with the changeup in the curveball. A little bit better spinning breaking ball as last time out that was against the Baltimore Orioles and a better change up also as he broke that long losing streak. Alex Rodriguez 
the third baseman this afternoon. Rodriguez shows bunt. Do you buy that? No. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> I'm sure he was doing that on his own. <laughs> he has been scuffling. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, but you're facing a left-hander. You're in this ballpark, and he has hit so many home runs here at Rogers Center in his career. You got that starting pitcher on the ropes in the first inning. He's got 647 home runs and 16 sacrifice bunts. <laughs> what do you think he's going to do? I bet you 15 of them came in his first year. What do you think? Last five games, it's not been pretty for a route. Two for 21 with six strikeouts. Ball on the strike. Romero, I'd love to get a ball on the ground. Missed down and away. Watch this afternoon. The Yankee veteran hitters versus Romero's changeup and his curveball. They don't even offer at it anymore. They'll take it. When he spins it up there, or he's throwing that changeup up there, they just let it go. They are waiting for that fastball. Now he's going to have to throw fastballs for strikes, and that's what made Brandon Morrow so effective in game one. Morrow was ahead of the Yankees all night long. He threw a lot of fastballs, made quality pitches with him. He just wasn't flipping it up there, but he went seven innings, gave up just four hits, and shut out the Yankees. Ricky Romero hasn't thrown a first pitch strike yet. Three and one to a -Rod. Ball four. The bases are loaded. Well, the Yankees love to hit with the bases loaded. They've hit ten grand slams this season. And it doesn't make any difference who's at the plate. Everybody gets into the act, and Robinson Cano's a 300 hitter. He's hit a couple of them this season. Cano's got a couple. Granderson has a couple. Nick Swisher leads the team with three grand slams. His last game against the Blue Jays. Robinson Cano's had a good series. Two hits in last night's game. He was aboard three times. He had three hits in the opener. And even with the left hander on the mound, they're going to play him up the middle. We saw this by the Blue Jays last night late, where they're really punching the middle of the of the diamond. Escobar. In fact, they had a shift on him yesterday. Right now he's playing right behind the pitcher. See how they bunch in the middle of that diamond? Where a lot of balls go off the bat of Robbie Cano. Right back up the middle. Ricky Romero is behind Cano. 1 0. Nobody out. Bases are loaded in the first. 2 0. Robinson Cano has nine grand slams. He is truly as relaxed as anybody in this lineup. Derek Jeter with the single started it off. Ichiro single to right. Alex Rodriguez walked to load the bases. It was a little over a third of the way to Alex Rodriguez total of grand slams in his career. He reached for that outside pitch. Arod has 23 grand slams in his career. It's amazing. Well, Rodriguez obviously has. Lots of experience. He's played in 2,519 games before today. But it's been a struggle for him of late. They need him to get going, to start driving the ball. <laughs> and now I've got a call there. That's a borderline pitch, and when you've been struggling to throw strikes, you don't often get that call. Got it that time from the home plate umpire. Robinson Cano thinks it's low. Mike Everett, the home plate umpire, had a good look at that fastball. It's two and two. Boy, this is a big pitch right here. Two and two. Nobody out. Make something happen on this pitch right here. How about a ground ball to the second baseman? Cano has hit into 22. Double plays. There's a fly ball to left. Rajay Davis comes in. Now he's backing up. Jeter's tagging at third. 
He'll come in to score. The throw goes to third, and the Yankees lead one to nothing. Robinson Cano with the RBI and it gives him 84 on the season. The sack fly to left. Yeah, they wanted to make something happen on that pitch. And then he got away with a mistake, a high mistake to Cano, and he kept it in the ballpark. Now you can really limit the damage right here by getting the ball on the ground and getting out of this with just one run scoring. That's the mindset right now you want from Ricky Romero. Don't worry about the run. Focus on Nick Swisher. Try to keep him on the ground and see if you can't get out of here with just one run allowed. Nick Swisher had a two run double in his first at bat in last night's game. Came in the first inning. Ricky, after the first pitch. Ricky's ball moves all over the place and you can see why he has thrown the most double play grounders in the last three seasons because he can't throw a ball straight. And if he makes his pitch and he keeps that team the offensive team on the defensive he'll do it. He'll be fine. First inning has been a problem for Ricky Romero. He's now allowed 20 runs in the first inning. That's not a bad idea. Romero needs to keep an eye on Ichiro. He stole third base last night in the eighth inning. And the Blue Jays have been victimized by Ichiro earlier. He had a four stolen base game against them in New York. He's got a big lead. That's a foul ball just outside of third. Well, Romero has been able to keep the ball down to Swisher. Now he just needs to get him to hit one of those grounders to an infielder. Well, he should be on the defensive now. The, the count 0 and 2 and 1 out. This is where you really concentrate on hitting your spots. And if you do that, if you execute those pitches, let your infield take over. Oh and two. Line drive to left. Davis is going to play it on the bounce. He gets it back in quickly. Ichiro stops at third. And the bases are loaded once again. Nick Swisher has a hit in his first at bat. The Yankees have three hits in the inning. Looping curveball. 0 and 2. And it's over the middle of the plate. And Swisher's hot. Everything he is hitting, when he gets his pitch, he's hitting it hard. He's not missing it. And that time a curveball that just hung up there with two strikes for him. Curtis Granderson. Bases loaded one out a run in. Breaking ball missed inside and you're right about the Yankee veteran hitters. They're going to lay off those breaking balls. As Romero has not shown them that he can throw those pitches for strike watching the first six batters now. And the drive to center field goes backing up makes the catch tagging at third is Ichiro. He comes in to score. The Yankees with two sacrifice flies in the first have taken a two nothing lead. But watching the, the first six batters all veterans they've been around a long time and they've been in these situations forever. They're not even offering at the curveball and the changeup. When they see it out of Romero's hand, you don't see him out in front, or you don't see them checking their swing. They just stay in their stances and wait for him to throw it over. Andrew Jones playing in right field this afternoon. Jones hitting just 200 for the season. There's a first pitch strike, and Romero's going to have to do that more frequently. You got to get ahead of the Yankees. You cannot pitch from behind against this veteran lineup. This is the 93rd game Andrew Jones has played in. But he has just 230 at bats. He's become a part time player late in his career. A prime time player in his prime for sure. He was a gold glover. Played center field like no other in the National League. How about a 50 home run season for Andrew Jones when he was with the Braves? And he always seems to come up big against the Blue Jays.
Victor Romero strikes out Andrew Jones. The Yankees leave a pair, but they've taken a 2 nothing lead. And Brent Lurie leads things off. He's top of the order. Rajay Davis is in left. Edwin Encarnacion against the Yankees this season. had a good year. He's at 340 against New York. Six doubles, a pair of home runs. He's driven in 12 for the season. You know, Lescobar is in the cleanup spot. Jan Gomes at first. Moises Sierra he has played in right field a lot this year. Jeff Mathis is in the seventh spot. And Danny Echeverria at second. And Anthony Ghosts. Is in center field. The lineup for the veteran Andy Pettit as he gets ready for his 12th start of the season. Five and three, 271 earned run average. It's an incredible story how he has come back to the Yankees and he has pitched really well since coming off the DL after that fractured ankle. He hasn't given up a run. And he, excuse me, 11 innings and he hasn't given up a run yet. And we saw him in his return at Yankee Stadium and he wasn't sharp, but he pitched through five innings. Pitched around plenty of jams, but the Blue Jays never could really get to him. Beth Lori fouls it back into the glove. Chris Sturts behind the plate this afternoon. You know, that's why we talk in the opening about Andy Pettit that they're looking for wins. They need wins. And, and what better guy to go out there than Andy Pettit, who, who knows how to win? He might not be the guy he was at the beginning of his career, but all that experience has helped him read bats and, and learn how to, to pitch to get big, big, big league hitters out. Andy Pettit has 245 wins. That's most among active pitchers. Roy Halliday's next on the list at 198. There's that backdoor breaking ball, and Lori goes after it. First strikeout of the afternoon for Andy Pettit. Andy Pettit's got a lot of good gloves behind him. A little different look here this afternoon. Ichiro Suzuki started in right last night. He's in left this afternoon. Granderson in center. Andrew Jones in right. Jones has 10 gold gloves to his credit. Eduardo Nunez has had problems at shortstop. He's committed seven errors this season. Robbie Cano at second base. Rodriguez and Swisher at the corners. And Chris Stewart has done a great job backing up Russell Martin. You know, they're missing another gold glover over at first base and Mark to share and they got some good news on him over the weekend. But Nick Swisher has been outstanding over there since filling in for to share. Rajay Davis. Had a four hit game last night. And Davis. Really has done a pretty good job and the steals obviously a big part of his game 45 steals on the season. Yeah, he can be a one man wrecking crew if you ask me if he's hot like he was yesterday with those four hits always on base always a threat to steal. I think good players make everybody else around you better. And, and you can throw Roger Davis in that category because he's going to get more fastballs for the guy hitting behind him. One and two he stays alive that four hit game for Roger. His seventh of his big league career. First this season. And you'd love him to get on board. 
ahead of that man. Edwin Encarnacion's had a big year. 110 RBIs. That doubles what he did last year. Another pop up. We had Alex Anthopoulos on the show last night giving us a little update on what his thoughts were as the team is winding down this season and how some of the players might fit in next year. I think with Rajay Davis I think he is considered an important part uh, particularly in that he can play all three outfield positions and I believe he's got a role on this team probably as a fourth outfielder. Yeah. And a guy gets hurt he can give you some some innings there also but he can come off the bench and help you win a ball game steal a base for you. Come up with a big hit. He's been around enough. He knows how to put together good at bats. We've seen him in that role very effective this year, early in the season, especially when he wasn't starting in a game. He would come off the bench, pinch run, steal a base, and score a big run. Maybe even steal a couple bases. A couple games he came in, stole first and second. It's a high fly ball to left. Each hero back at the wall, at the track. Home run, Rajay Davis. His eighth home run of the season. And the Blue Jays have cut into that Yankee lead. First of all, how's he go down and get it? Plate coverage. That he keeps his hands back and looked like a cutter from Andy Pettit and Rajay didn't commit too quickly, let the ball come in, down it and drops the head of the bat on and hits his eighth home run. Credit comes right back with a strike. His previous season high was five, and each time he hits a home run, he establishes a new career high in that department. Pettit hey. right back, not Wavering whatsoever after giving up the home run, he jumps ahead of Incarnacion 0 and 2. On days like today, a day game where it's windy and the roof is open, that's the best way to hit a ball out of this ballpark. That low line drive when really whipped around here late in the season and knock a lot of fly balls down, especially in the gaps. Here's the home run watch. Doesn't get very high off the ground. Line drive. Just over the wall. Ichiro doing his best Rajay Davis impression to try and bring that one back. That was probably the best catch I've seen all season. Rajay Davis took a home run from the Yankees' Casey McGee earlier in the season right here at Panther Center. Edwin Encarnacion always is tough with two strikes. This was a pretty good pettit pitch on that outside. He's hit 42 home runs. 21 of them have come with two strikes. So yeah, he has improved his two strike approach. And he doesn't panic. He has an idea what the pitchers are trying to do to him. Chris Stewart hangs on to that foul tip and Carnacion strikes out. Let's take a look at the scouting report for the veteran Andy Pettit. And you'll see a little bit of everything from him. Fastball just 34% of the time that he will use it. His main pitchers are the cutter and the slider and the slow curveball. He'll, he'll change up on you, turn it over just a little bit. But he'll move that change up and cutter around. He can backdoor it to the right handers. He can throw it to your back foot if you are a right hander. Mix it a little bit of a curveball, but uh, very smart. You know, that's Escobar, the shortstop heading in the cleanup spot. Well, Pettit's got a very difficult delivery because he hides the ball so well. He kind of cross fires, throws it across his body a bit, but tough to pick up the baseball out of his delivery. Ground ball. Rodriguez wide at third. Goes on the money. The inning is over. But Rajay Davis with one out. Takes Pettit deep. His eighth home run of the season. That cuts the Yankees' lead in half. We've played an inning. It's 2-1 New York.
And Toronto hits a home run, you can win big. Audio home theater systems and big TVs like an 80-inch Sharp Aqua Sport Drum. To enter, visit Hit a Home Run with Sharp.ca. Ricky Romero gets ahead of Eduardo Nunez. Nunez playing at shortstop. He's two for seven against Ricky Romero. He's never had a problem offensively. It gives the Yankees a dimension of speed. He's got extra base pop in his bat, but he also has the ability to steal some bases. He's 11 of 13 in limited action this year. The problem has always been the consistency with his glove. Coming up with untimely errors for the Yankees. You know, they need someone as a backup for Jeter. He's getting to that point. And they have tried Romero Pena in the past, and they've tried Nunez, and they're just looking for somebody when they need Derek Jeter a day off. This might be the guy. Now, Nunez committed seven errors. He's only played in 80 games. Excuse me, he's only had 80 at bats. He's played in this his 34th game. That's a lot of errors. But he can swing the bat. The yeah. Yankees know that. And Derek Jeter, he's taking more time off. This is the 25th time this year that he's been to DH. He and Alex Rodriguez. They grew up in the game together. Two baseball icons as teammates now in New York. The, the plan for Nunez was to play him all over the infield. Utility type of infielder. Brett Laurie dives, pops to his feet in a hurry, and he's not going to get Nunez. Laurie's showing great range. He laid out, got to his feet in a hurry. Nunez just runs too well. He outran that ball. And he elects to slide it in the first base. I think he felt like the he had a sense that that throw was offline by Brett Laurie. Ball's hit hard, and Laurie covers so much ground. Covers up that hole on the left side, and he senses that this ball is going to be thrown wildly so he hits the deck and with that good speed I'm sure they're going to give him an infield hit boy Laurie made a terrific play getting to his feet in a hurry but you can see Nunez safe easily at first indeed it is a base hit that's the fourth Yankee hit of the afternoon already so the Yankees are four for eight. First time through the order number nine hitter is the catcher Chris Stewart and he bunts it foul over the screen. Yankees don't run an awful lot. They have 30 sacrifice bunts for the season. Stewart in that backup role has three sacrifice bunts. I think at this time of the year, there's only five games left in the regular season. Teams will become a little bit more conservative. And they'll play for one run here, they'll play for one run there. They'll match up bullpens earlier in the ball game and get left on left situations that they need to. It's a tough time of the year. It's time to win a ball game, so you become a little bit more conservative. The problem you have this time of the year is you don't have any more games on the schedule. You can't make it up. Stewart swings away and falls behind 0-2. Of course, the Yankees. They say they're not concerned about the Orioles, but the Orioles are only a game behind. Chris Tillman gave Baltimore a great start yesterday through eight innings of one hit ball. Baltimore beat Boston nine to one. They'll play tonight. Steve Johnson will go up against Felix Dubron, the left-hander. Oh and two. Bounced in the dirt, and Nunez was thinking about saying, like, oh boy, you talk about having an approach. To advance on a ball in the dirt, Nunez did just that. He didn't wait to see where the ball was going. He went when the ball hit the dirt. Well, you can see the flight of the ball no, 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 no. when you're no, no. at first base. And if you can't see it and anticipate that ball in the dirt, just take off. With that type of speed, you're going to have a good shot at moving up 90 feet. That was a perfect example of how you should do it with that ball in the dirt. Another ball in the dirt. This time he's going to take advantage of it. The ball didn't go as far, but Jeff Mathis couldn't locate it. It was right at his feet, and Nunez picked up on it. He moves up 90 feet. That eliminates the possibility of a ground ball double play. Well, with Ricky, you're going to get a lot of balls in the dirt. It's just a fact. 
it happened so you anticipate it and I, I bet you Nunez was kicking himself for not moving up on the first one that time he moves up and now second base and nobody out you better keep your eye on Nunez do it pokes it toward right Gomes battling the sun makes the catch and Stewart was just trying to move up Nunez and he pops out to first. The Blue Jays on Sportsnet brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware and building center location. Homeowners helping homeowners. Derek Jeter picked up a base hit his first time up. Jeter now has 210 hits for the season. It's the most in the majors. Mathis and Romero couldn't get together on the pitch they wanted to start Jeter up with, so he steps out. There's a strike on the inside corner. Ricky Romero gave up two runs to the Yankees in the top half of the first. The Blue Jays got one back on Rajay Davis's solo home run. Derek Jeter, as we mentioned, uh, 210 hits. There's another strike right on the inside corner. Number two in the American League is Miguel Cabrera. He has 198. He's going to get 200 hits. Cabrera leads the American League in total bases, RBIs, batting average. He's having a pretty good year. Yeah, back. he's doing okay with the bat, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's going to be all right. Jeter strikes out. There's that changeup after a couple of fastballs, and that's the difference for Romero. Yeah, throw it when you have two strikes, get it close enough, and you'll have good results. Set it up with the fastball, something firm, and then pull the string. Use that changeup. And it's got Jeter way out in front. Two down now. Ichiro Suzuki single to right his first time up. Came in to score the Yankees second run. Popped up. Playable. Brent Lorre in foul territory, shading his eyes, and Ricky Romero does a good job. He gives up a leadoff single, but the Yankees strand the runner. It's 2-1 New York.
enjoying those big comfy green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone are TD Comfort Zone contest winners. Congratulations, and those seats are courtesy of TD. What a beautiful day to be sitting on the front row and watching your favorite team. Great afternoon to sit right down there and get a bird's eye view of just how quick the old game is. <laughs> and it is quick for those seats because we've been down there. Jan Gomes looks to start things off against Pettit goes after the first pitch. To his credit, Jan Gomes understands you got to make some adjustments, and he's eliminated that high leg kick he had earlier in the year. Trying to flatten out that swing just a little bit. There was a lot of moving parts to it. So one of the things the Yankees, or excuse me, the Blue Jays have done is he's taken away that leg kick. Now there are guys that can use the leg kick. Bautista's got a leg kick. B.J. Upton, Chipper Jones for years, Mark McGuire. Do you think it's something that Gomes can go back to, or do you think he needs to get a more consistent approach to play? I, I think the combination of a high leg kick and a high bat, and he's got to bring the bat down along with the leg kick. The timing was just messed up, and they started throwing a lot of off-speed pitches to him. So if you can eliminate some of that extra movement, I think you'll see the ball just a little bit better. You'll be balanced. And, and hitting, you've got to be balanced at the plate. To take uh, advantage of hitting some of the breaking balls. Free two pitch from Pet. Breaking ball upstairs. Jan Gomes will start things off in the leadoff walk. Big thing for the Yankees today, I'm sure, is going to be Pettit's command, just to see how good he can command both sides of the plate. This is his third start since coming off the disabled list. He made nine starts prior to getting hit. In the leg off the bat of Casey Kotchman, he suffered a broken leg. And now he's just trying to get back in the form again. Well, he knows. And he talked about that before he made his first start against the Blue Jays when he came off the DL. He says, I don't throw as hard as I used to. So command is paramount. I, I have to be able to command all of my pitches. Why says Sierra? In the right field. Makes the first pitch breaking ball. Well, I think that's a great statement by Pettit because early in your career, you throw hard enough where if you make a mistake and leave it over the plate, you can get away with it. Got a little extra velocity. That's not the case any longer. Fly ball to left. Ichiro has a beat on it. Sierra is out, one down. I love watching those ball players, especially pitchers. Who have success as one type of pitcher early in their career. Now they get a little bit older and they have to refine what they do. And they become even better pitchers. In later stages of their career. They, they, they almost reinvent themselves. I wouldn't say Pettit has reinvented himself. But he's a different pitcher than he was when he was younger. Yeah he was always a guy that had a little extra giddy up on the fastball. And he, he could make mistakes in the strike zone. Jeff Mathis. Goes after the first pitch. I'll give you my favorite as far as rebuilding themselves. Yeah, I know who it is. He's left handed. Pitch for the Angels. Yeah. He did a terrific job. Frank Tanana, of course. Frank Tanana, when he came up with the Angels, teamed up with Nolan Ryan, and it was a fastball feast. <laughs> I mean, he could bring it, and it was hard, and he had a hard breaking ball. And then he hurt his arm. And then he went. Back to a different style of pitcher, pitched with Texas, pitched with the Red Sox, but really came into his own in Detroit, where he learned how to flip that breaking ball, and he understood who he was. He knew that he wasn't Frank Tanana of the 70s, who could throw 95 miles an hour. Well, he gets you leaning out over the plate, and then bust you inside. But he's the guy who reinvented himself from a hard thrower to a very good pitcher. 1975 with the Angels, he had 269 strikeouts and had a 2.62 ERA. Mathis stays alive. 1976, he won 19 games, had 261 strikeouts and a 2.43 ERA. How, how about innings? How many innings would he go out there and throw? He and Nolan Ryan back to back. 
Wow, I'll give you three years in a row. 74, 75, 76. 268, 257, and 288. He was a horse. Tapper right out in front of home plate. Chris Stewart quickly goes to first, and Mathis is on. Dan Gomes moves to second. But now there are two down. You know, in talking about pitchers along the lines of Pettit and Tanana, Pettit never really had that kind of stuff that Tanana had. But a lot of the detractors will say, you see, he threw too many innings early with the Angels, and that's why he got hurt. But Tanana won 240 games. Frank had just five fewer wins than Andy Pettit has. He had a great career. In about the same amount of time in the big leagues. This is Pettit's 17th year. Tanana started in 73. His first full season was 74, and he pitched with the Yankees in 2000. Or in, excuse me, in 1993, just pitched a couple games with New York. Danny Echevarria. I think he's opened some eyes with the bat. Everybody was very comfortable. He could play defensively, play in the field. But we have seen him grow since he's come to the big leagues. When he first got up here, he was swinging at everything. I mean, literally everything. And now he's, he's got nine game hits to Ray Murphy's done a nice job with all of these kids. And he's got an assistant now, Chad Matola, and they work very well together. Echeverria hits it to Rodriguez. Writes himself, throws in time to end the inning. Echeverria hit it hard. Blue Jays get a lead off walk, but leave a base run. Garage sale. Blue Jays and Yankees will wrap up this four game series. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. The garage sale happening at section 127 prior to the game. You can purchase game used equipment, autographed memorabilia, and much more. The proceeds raised will support Jays Care Foundation. You must have a ticket to the ball game to attend the garage sale. Call the Blue Jays at 416 341 1234. Log on to bluejays.com and stop by most Rogers Plus locations. What a way to pick up an early Christmas present at the Blue Jays garage sale. Alex Rodriguez leading things off for New York in the third. Important is this start for Ricky Romero, his psyche for the offseason? For me, I think it's huge. So do I. I think he needs to put this season to bed 
and be able to close his eyes and forget about that 13 game loss streak. Plus the fact you get a little bit of satisfaction. He hasn't beaten the Yankees in seven starts. He's 0 5 in those last seven starts coming into this game. And you're playing for pride. And I think every ball player has pride. I don't care what kind of season they're having. Nobody wants to go through the season that Vicky Romero's gone through, obviously. But if you have a chance to knock off the Yankees and Orioles happen to win, you'll always have the satisfaction of knowing I did my job. I beat the Yankees at the end of the season. And I think it'll go a long way to help him learn from the challenges that he has gone through this year. It's been a tough year. And he will benefit, I think, from this tough year. There is 14 home starts this season. He got off to a, a great start. 5-0, and 3-5 earned run average, but his last eight not so good. I mean, those are disastrous numbers. An ERA of almost 10, and opponents batting at 350. Well, you know what? It's been a disappointing season, obviously, and it's hard to erase the impact of a season long of disappointing outing, but this is his 32nd outing. One game can have an impact, especially when you're having a down season. One game. I'll give you an example. And in Baltimore, they call it the curse of the Andino. Robert Andino beat Jonathan Papelbon on the final day of the season last year. The Orioles celebrated as if they were going to the postseason because they knocked the Red Sox back. And then Tampa Bay won their game, and the Red Sox were out of the postseason. Cued off the end of the map. This is trouble for Romero, and he's not going to have a play. Robinson Cano is hot. Everything he swings at now is falling for a hit. He picked up a sack fly in his first at bat. Now he has a swinging bunt for a base hit in his second. He got jammed in last night's game and came up with a base hit. That's a full swing. And it doesn't even go 90 feet, but he'll be credited with an infield hit. Romero really no play at first base. Yeah, he did the right thing by holding on to that. Cano has a base hit. So the Yankees' first two batters reach here in the fourth, excuse me, in the third inning. It's 2 1 New York. Nick Swisher with a base hit already this afternoon. You know, we talk about Romero getting ahead with his fastball. From a hitter's perspective, can the Yankees just look fastball on the first pitch? And is it a danger then for Romero to throw fastballs on the first pitch? I think eventually against a veteran team like, like the Yankees, you're going to have to mix in your other pitches. And that's why it's so, it's so important for him to get his curveball over and his, his changeup over for strikes. And then you blend that in with that fastball. Yankees are not a team, although that that swing at a lot of first pitch fastballs. Eric Jeter will try and jump on one, surprise you a little bit. But there's a lot of them who like to work the count, and, and they're not afraid to take that first pitch fastball for a strike and work from there. Two and zero oh. takes that high strike. Swisher thought it was a little bit upstairs. Swisher for the season coming into this game, just a 2.30 average against the Blue Jays. Of course, of 16 games, but he has 13 RBIs. He leads the Yankees in runs driven in against the Blue Jays. Traditionally, September has been a tough month on him, batting average-wise, except this year. That's past Echeverria into right. Danny Echeverria tried to block it, didn't get in front of it, and it went right past him into right. That was a tailor made double play ball if he takes a step back and plays it on the hop. It's an air on the second baseman, and this is right at Echeverria. It hit hard, but just doesn't. I think that's his unfamiliarity of playing second base right there. He just didn't look natural on should I square that ball up? 
and then start the double play. Should I play it off to the side? That's him just not knowing how to play that that position at second base. Curtis Granderson had a sack fly in his first at bat. This outside, it's a ball and a strike. Okay, now a lot of people are going to be watching and say, "Well, wait a minute, Echeverria is a big leaguer. Shouldn't he be able to handle that? He plays shortstop and second base, isn't that much different? How much of an adjustment is it?" Did you see how uncertain he was on how he went after the baseball? You know, shortstop is his natural position, and I think his best game so far here at the big leagues have been when he plays shortstop. A little confusion right there on how he should be able to field that baseball to start the double play. Yeah, and you could see it. He was really uncertain as to whether he should stay on his feet and glove it, go down to his knees and block it. And it was just a lot of doubt. Curtis Granderson is on the leaderboard for American League home runs. He has 40. He's fifth in the American League. Hamilton leads it. Cabrera and Encarnacion tied. And Dunn of the White Sox has 41. This has popped up. Shallow left. Escobar out. Makes the catch. That's a big out to get Granderson to pop up. That's the first out of the inning. Andrew Jones will step in. He struck out to end the first. Hitting 199 for the season. But he is a dangerous hitter and he's really dangerous on the first pitch. He'll be cheating for a first well, pitch fastball. Yeah, he'll be looking for it. Right here to try and get some RBIs. And Romero throws a fastball that was down and away. Good movement from that pitch. Rodriguez walked to start the inning. Cano had a swinging bun up the third baseline. Then Swisher reached on the air by the second baseman. Jones has played in his career just 23 games. Here at Rogers Center, but he has six home runs. Some big games when he was with the White Sox in this ballpark. He's had multi home run games for the Yankees against the Blue Jays, also. And a good fastball in a good spot. Well, when Ricky gets to this spot right here with two strikes, these are the pitches that he goes to a lot. A little bit more change-ups, a lot more curveballs than we saw in his overall performance where he'll throw. He still throws the fastball the majority of the time with two strikes. But to get the strikeout, which he needs right here at the ground ball, he's got to get that curveball or that change-up over. Yankees have a 2-1 lead as they bat in the third. Two and two. Up and away. It's a full count now. One out. Bases are loaded. Romero had an unusual follow through hurt. on that pitch. Yeah. Yeah. I think he got hurt. Watch his front foot land and he twists his ankle. Like his spikes got caught on the clay around home plate. Yeah, John Farrell talking to Mike Everett about that and Hap Hudson is out to check with him out. But you're right. When that foot landed, he took an awkward hop and then you saw him get off that ankle in a hurry. Well, I after watching it again I'm wondering if it's his back foot or his front foot. We'll see. He'll have a couple of tosses here but I'm, I'm not sure if the front foot got caught pushing off or the back foot. He felt it again when he threw that pitch. Mm -hmm. Watch the foot the back foot. The one that's engaged to the pitching rubber. 
See him hop in like he wants to stay off that back foot a little bit. Now he definitely felt something after he made that yeah. pitch and. Well he's got to be honest with John Farrell right now. You have to be certain that you're not going to risk the possibility of injuring your arm or your shoulder. I mean I know you know how much you want to stay in this game. You don't yeah. want to come out of this game. In this situation. He appears to be OK at least he's convinced the manager and the trainer that he's OK. Get through this inning and then they can go in the clubhouse and tape it up in between innings. Not even really sure what it was but it looked like. His right ankle when he yeah. hit and then he awkwardly twisted it. But it's a full count the bases are loaded there's one out Andrew Jones at the plate. Come on and missed. Looked like another change up and he struck him out. Watch Ricky coming off the mound right here. Watch what he does with his left foot right there. Almost like it was that back push off leg. You're right. I saw it land and, and skip just a little bit. But then he was hopping around on that front foot. Uh, we'll keep an eye on him. You know what it might do right here is have him back off just a little bit instead of full bore towards home plate just take a little something off that pitch right there that last one was beautiful. Oh what a play by Echeverria that makes up for the air earlier in the inning. He saves two runs for Ricky Romero by spearing that line drive off the bat of Eduardo Nunez. Romero is limping off the field but. What a play by the rookie second baseman. That ball is past him, headed for center, but it ends the inning. Yankees load the bases. It was a hot shot off the bat of Nick Switcher. Then with the bases loaded, he saves two runs for Ricky Romero, taking a line drive and gloving it off the bat of Eduardo Nunez. So the baseball gods give and take the win. Yeah, we've heard he could be spectacular in the field, and that time shows off why. Good range for Echeverria to snare that one. Number nine hitter Anthony Ghost. Ricky Romero had some sort of leg problem during the inning. You see him at the end of the inning. He's limping off the field. And as soon as he got to the dugout, he would head into the trainer's room and the trainers would follow him quickly up to the clubhouse. Sean Hill is loosening up just in case. They got him up as Romero was working to Nunez. Up over near the Blue Jays dugout, Chris Stewart got a late break. Oh, what a recovery! Chris Stewart didn't see the ball initially off the bat, 
And he located and quickly hustled and made a nice sliding catch just before he got to the dugout steps. The more I watch Chris Stewart, the more I like him as a player. He can catch, he can throw, he calls a great game. And right there, makes a nice play sliding into the Blue Jays' dugout. It's a big guy. And I think the Yankees have a winner in Chris Stewart as their backup catcher. Yeah, he has done a good job, but he did not join the Yankees until the middle of April. He signed originally with the Giants and played a little bit in Baltimore, and he is now here. He's done a good job all year for them. Top of the order. That boy struck out his first time up against Andy Pettit. Look how quickly Pettit is working. That's a good Love sign that. for the Yankees. Yeah. They really feel good about the way Pettit has thrown lately. Do you know what that, that just exudes confidence? Give me the ball. I'm going to stay on that mound. See guys walking around and looking up in the stands and wondering. He just gets it and he throws it. Yeah, I mean, you know, he knows that you know, nothing bad is going to happen. You might get knocked out of the ball game, but it's not a big deal. You just pitch. He's got 245 wind under his belt. Just make pitches. Pitch there. I've seen pitchers not wanting to throw the ball because they're afraid of what might happen. Guy at first base and they'll throw over 10 or 12 times. You go in there and talk to him and say, hey, you, know, you want to throw home? And they're like, no, not just yet. <laughs> I'm just not sure what I'm going to throw. I might get hit here. But Pettit gets it and just paints with it. And it's got three strikeouts on the afternoon. Two down. Jay Davis sees the reason the Blue Jays have a run. He hit a solo home run off Pettit in his first at bat. His eighth homer and his 40th RBI. Jose Davis has six straight hits. Had four hits in the game last night. He's two for two this afternoon. The all new 2012 Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Tuesday, Saturday at Rogers Center. Lots of kids on hand. It's a gorgeous day at the ballpark. The roof is open. Sun is out. And a good crowd on hand. They went in Carnacion and goes after the first pitch. You see the good crowd last night. There were 25,000 in attendance. Appears to be a little bit bigger than that this afternoon. Andy Pettis never lost that. He's got a great move to first. He can shut down a running game all by himself with that great move. He had Mark Burley right up there. Career pickoffs. In baseball. On the show and fights it off. That fastball right in on his hands. Base Steelers this season. As you see, Rajay Davis has 45 steals. He's been caught 13 times, but with Pettit on the mound, Base Steelers have only had four steals in nine attempts. He really gives the catchers a great opportunity to throw runners out. Kickoff became an official stat in 1974. And he has had the most pickoffs ever, 102 of them in his career. You can see why he hangs that leg up there a long time. We talked to Jimmy Key about that pickoff. He, like Pettit, had a very good pickoff move. And I asked him, do you make up your mind when you lift that leg? He said, no, I make up my mind before I even start. 
So I have an idea when I want to go to first and it looks like some of them change direction when they pause up there. But Jimmy Key said, well, most of the time you have an idea that you're going to first before you really make that move. It looks like Pettit has the ability to hang. Hang in the air with that leg. And then throw over to first base. But the key for him, the reason he has so many pickoffs is he does the same thing when he go when he's going home. The leg looks like it's coming up in the same spot at the same time that as a runner, you just you're just not real sure where he's going. The one thing that the runners have to look at is that right foot of Pettit. If that crosses the rubber, he has to go home. And that's what Pettit is so good at. He never allows that right foot to cross the rubber. He just keeps it in front of the rubber, whether he's going home or to first. There will be things that pitchers do, like with their glove, that might give away what they're doing if they're going home or going to first. Well, that was a late call. Mike Everett took a while to think about it, but when he did, he thought it was strike three. A very delayed call. And Pettit gets out of the inning. Sean Hill is coming in. Evidently, Ricky Romero's injury won't allow him to continue. Appearance in the major leagues. There's his 15 starts at Triple A. Had a very good year. One loss wise, nine and two. ERA of four and a half. Fastball slider, and he's got a split now. And he'll get the ground ball out. You can see the ground ball percentage: 84 percent of the ball on the ground for Hill. He's a strike thrower. That's the first thing that you notice about him. Sean Hill, we mentioned he made 44 appearances in the big leagues, all as a starter. This is his first relief appearance. He had four starts with the Blue Jays in 2010. He's from Mississauga, Ontario. Drafted by the Expos in 2000 in the sixth round. He is the 54th Blue Jay to appear this season. That's a new franchise record for most players used in a season. And that's not the kind of record you want to set. 34 pitchers now that they have used this season. Here's his old team. Sean Hill started his big league career in 2004. He made three starts for the Expos. And then the Expos became the Washington Nationals and he had his biggest season most appearances in the big leagues in 2007 made 16 starts for the Nationals. And here he walks the leadoff man Chris Stewart the number nine hitter. Ricky Romero appeared to suffer a leg injury we're not sure the extent of that injury obviously it's such that he can't continue. When he goes three innings allows five hits two earned runs both earned runs came in the first inning. 
and he pitched out of a couple of jams in the second and third inning, but then he injured himself delivering a pitch and had to leave the game. 32 starts this season for Romero. That's three years in a row for Ricky. And he has made 32 starts for the Blue Jays. Every time they have called on him, he's answered the bell. Derek Jeter didn't like that called strike by Mike Everett. He squared the bunt, and as soon as Everett called the strike, you could hear Jeter say no. But he's stated his thoughts and has moved on. Mike Everett has a reputation of having a big strike zone. Peter Bunts this one foul. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you establish that you have a big strike zone, hitters will pick up on that and they'll they'll know and they'll start swinging at those pitches they think that otherwise would be out of the zone. Yeah, I, I think the baseball the ruling on the umpires and giving them all the quest tech and all the different technology to grade their strike zone, I think that's hurt the game. Yes. I think it's taken away a little bit of the nature of the individuality. Ground ball to short. Escobar comes after it. He'll go to second for one. Look at that's a career. I mean, he almost turned two on Derek Jeter. It looked like all they were going to get was the lead runner, but he came across the bag like he'd been doing that for years. And not taking anything for granted. You go ahead and you make that play. You never know what the runner's going to do. He might fall down. He might get hurt. He might pull something. So you go ahead and finish off the play just in case. And he did. Stewart comes across and tries to break it up. And that's Maria clears himself. Clears some spot to get that throw off. I think the only one on the infield that expected that ball to go to first was Echeverria. Everybody else anticipated that was just going to be a force out. Get the lead runner and we'd move on. But he continued to follow through. Almost turned two. Talented young man. Derek Jeter with one out. He's at first. Ichiro Suzuki. Yankees have two runs on six hits. Blue Jays have one run on two hits. Teams have split the first two games of this series. On the ground at Chivaria. Second for one, back to first, not in time. They get another four side, each year. Of course, from the left side, very quick down the first baseline and beats it easily at first. Yeah, tough double up, Ichiro Suzuki, especially when he has that running start like he does. And again, Echeverria not real sure you know, how he was going to turn that double play. Talking about Sean Hill coming into this game, he makes his season debut and he is the 54th Blue Jay player they have used this year. That's a franchise record. Twice they've had 53. 2011 and then 99. Injuries have had their toll on the ball club, but also there's been some underperforming players that have gone back down to the minor leagues. There have been some call ups that were disappointing and they've shipped them back down to the minor leagues. Players that they got glowing reports on and they brought them up here for need and it just didn't work out for them. They didn't see what the reports were saying. Alex Rodriguez, he's walked twice this afternoon. Suzuki's a threat to run. He had a stolen base in last night's game. He's 28 on the season and he's got a big lead at first. Ball in the strength. Sean Hill's now 31 years old. He pitched in the opener in the WBC in Germany and helped Canada qualify for the WBC tournament in March. And he enjoyed that experience, although he's only there for a couple of days. Yeah. How about that? Uh, usually, when you bring guys up, 
the last couple weeks of September they've already gone home and they finished their minor league season and they've been out of baseball for a couple of weeks. He was over in Europe. Rodriguez hits it on the ground. Escobar goes to second. Sean Hill hits out of it with the ground ball this short. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. The Yankees have a one run lead. Lucky winner will take home the Sharp Home Theater System, including audio soundbar, Blu ray player, and Aquas LCD TV. To enter, visit Hit a Home Run with Sharp.ca. Sharp, big is too small a word for it. A lot of Yankee fans in town. It's final time the Yankees will be here this season. You know, Escobar hits it high into the air and right. Andrew Jones near the foul line makes the catch. It's one down. Jan Gomes had a leadoff walk in the second, moved to second base, but he would. They left stranded. Ball on the strike. Young Gomes is going to play winter ball. I think that's good for him. He's going to the Dominican Republic and a chance to play in winter ball. I think that's really going to help him at the plate. Hits this ball in the center. Curtis Granderson back pedals quickly and makes a catch. While we have a moment, we'd like to say happy birthday to Fred Stevenson of Don Mills, Ontario. Fred will be 101 on October 1st, and he's a big baseball fan. Said he saw his first baseball game at Lakeshore in the 40s, at the old ballpark, and always watched the Blue Jays, and was a fan at the ballpark during the 92 World Series. But he tunes in all the time to watch the Blue Jays on Sportsnet. We just want to wish him a happy birthday. And Fred, we appreciate your support. And we're glad you're a big Blue Jay fan closing in on your 101st birthday. That's awesome. He's pretty good for 100 years old, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> With a fly ball to center. This one's hit a little bit deeper, but Granderson squares up, takes a catch on the warning track. We have played four here at Rogers Center. Yankees have a 2 1 lead. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Black Bay Broadcast Studio.
special guest on Monday, former CFL receiver and current bachelor Brad Smith. Maybe I'm with Tim and Sid between 1 and 4 on Sportsnet, the Fan 590 in Toronto. And he'll co-host the primetime edition of Connected at 10 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet East and Ontario. And don't forget, The Bachelor Canada debuts Wednesday on City TV. Good bunch of kids on hand. It's the final Junior Jays Saturday of the season. It's always a big hit with the kids, and they are out in force. Blue Jays have drawn really well this year. It's been so fun to come to the ballpark this summer, and the place is going wild and jammed up. They have really moved up the rankings in attendance this season. Broken bat. And Escobar bottles it, and Cano will reach again. I'm not sure if Escobar saw that broken bat or not, but the ball landed just on the edge of the dirt at second base in that sliding pit. Escobar never got a good grip on the baseball, and Cano's aboard again. And he didn't go after it very well either. You can see the broken bat and freezes for a little bit. You can see he takes his time going in to get the baseball. Pro hops. Goes down, hits his bare hand as it was trying to go into the glove and then bounces away from him. Yeah, and you saw him look up before he really got to the baseball. It was almost like he was looking to see where Cano was. The ball hit off his glove. I would think that would be an error. It has been scored a hit for Cano. He saw Escobar wearing the eye black. Of course, that was the root of the problem he had last time he was here. And I, I think they just changed it back to yeah, an error. Yeah, it, it was an error. I mean, I thought right so. off his glove. He, he was in front of it. And ball wasn't hit that hard. But anyway, the eye black that he's wearing has Blue Jays logo on it today. So it's an error on the shortstop. Sean Hill into the ball game. That's his second inning of relief. He came into the ball game to start the fourth inning. Ricky Romero, the starter, with some sort of leg injury. We are not aware of exactly what that injury is. We haven't been told yet, but he could not continue in this game. Outside three and one. See, there is a problem with the scoreboard totals in our scorebook because they switched Nick Swisher's air in the third inning to a hit. So the ball that Echevarria was charged with an air on has been changed to a base hit. Well, that explains it right there. And so that had the totals on. So remove the air to Echevarria in the third inning and give Nick Swisher a hit. So Swisher is two for two. Full count. Cano at first. There he goes. Ball is inside. And it's ball four. So Swisher takes a walk. He's perfect on the afternoon. Two for two with a walk. Cano is pushed to second on the wall. So now the first two reach. Curtis Granderson will step in. I wouldn't be surprised to see Granderson bunt right here. He's not swinging the bat that well. Ask him to bunt on the first pitch. If he gets it down, fine. If not, then turn him loose. We saw it last night against the left hander. Joe Girardi had Granderson bunting. To play for a couple of runs late in the game. Not running here, and he takes a strike. Against the right hander, I guess he likes his percentages a little bit better against the right hander. Well, you mentioned it early on. The uh, Yankees are running out of games. They have one a one game lead over the Orioles. There will be five games left, and you could see he called Andrew Jones back, and now he's got Raul Abanez coming up to the on deck circle. 
And Jones was aware of this. Ricky Romero started the ball game, the left hander. So now with Romero out, Abanez is getting loose in the on deck circle. Ball in the strike to Granderson. Yeah, I thought he might bunt also. The batting average is under 230 now, and Hill throws a lot of ground balls. Jan Gomes. Well, what a good play by Escobar as he took the low throw and gets the force out at second. Cano advances to third on the out. Gomes really challenged Escobar as he threw that ball in the dirt. They're lucky they got the force out at second. Ground ball goes right through the legs of Nick Swisher, so that might have messed up Gomes just a little bit. And there's the play you're talking about. That was outstanding. That had a chance of being really ugly. If that ball gets by Escobar and goes into left field. Yeah, and there's a good chance that was going to happen, but you now did a good job to field the short hop and get the force out. That keeps the double play in order. And now they're going to deal with the pinch hitter, Raul Abanez. Abanez started the first two games of this series in left field. Well, he's pinch hitting for Andrew Jones. Banez has faced Hill in the past. He's two for five with a home run. Got an uppercut swing. Naturally gets the ball in the air. That's what they're looking for here. And Hill's got a good sinker and he's got a, a little bit of a split finger fastball. And he gets a lot of ground balls. The Yankees have a 2 1 lead. They hit two sacrifice flies in the first inning. Robinson Cano sack fly to left. Curtis Granderson sack fly to center. But that's what veterans do. They have run producing situation. They put the ball in play. Find a way. Late in the season, you got to find a way to score those runs. Make those pitches. Make the play on defense. Gomes gets another chance. Second for one. Back to first. This time they convert the double play. Jan Gomes got a second chance at turning that double play. He starts the 3-6-3 three, three double play. Takes the short hop. Throws the strike to Escobar who returns it to first to end the inning. And 13 season ticket by December 7, 2012. You'll receive a $100 Blue Jays gift card, a Blue Jays Authentic Collection Premier Jacket, and a limited edition Jose Bautista bobblehead. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416 341 1234 or log on to bluejays.com to order your season tickets. Ichiro Suzuki moves from left to right. Raul Banez pinch hit for Andrew Jones, who started in right. 
Who takes over in left? Jeff Mathis. Grounded out his first time up, trying to get something going. And the pennant has retired four straight. I think it's amazing what Pettit has done this year. Remember, in spring training, he came down to spring training. He was throwing batting practice to some of the Yankee players, and they said, "Hey, you still have it." And he said, "Really? You think I do?" And he called the Yankees, went home, got in better shape, came back, pitched a little bit in the minor leagues to get in shape. Came up in the middle of the season and. It's like acquiring another veteran arm at the trade deadline. Well, wow, it's certainly the same thing. And when Andy Pettit retired, a lot of people thought he was a little premature. The ball is drilled to center field. Granderson's not going to get it. It bounces off the wall. Mathis is headed for second, and he'll get there with a stand-up double. Twelfth double of the season for Jeff Mathis. That starts the bottom of the fifth for the Jays. That pitch was out over the plate. And it was up for Mathis, who's shown some extra base pop this season. It's this ball hard to center field. Granderson wasn't real sure if he should turn to his left or turn to his right. And just hit so hard. And Mathis will have a leadoff double. Well, he really squared it up. And you're right. That ball looked like it was going to hook on Granderson. He got in between. And once he was hesitant, the ball sailed over his head. Danny Echeverria. Doesn't show bunt and takes a pitch. The Yankees are expecting bunt. Swisher at first base is right even with the bases. He's in guarding against the bunt. A Rod even with the bag at third. Ground ball to the right side. Good job by Echeverria. He moves Mathis to third. All new 2012 Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Yankees are going to play the infield in. It's a one run game. Jeff Mathis at third, Anthony Ghost. How difficult is it to pull off a squeeze, lefty batter against lefty pitcher? Yeah, it's pretty tough. You've got to really stay in there. I might give him one shot and then. We've seen the safety squeeze used used by the Blue Jays this year. Safety squeeze a little bit different than the suicide squeeze. Safety squeeze the runner just makes sure the ball gets down, doesn't take off before the, or excuse me, while the pitch is on the way. Chris Stewart, the catcher, asked for time before Pettit was set to deliver. Well, Stewart wants to make sure that Pettit is set. And with the infield in, I don't think they would try the contact play. This is popped up into center field. Long run for Granderson. He's going to get there, and the ball is just too shallow. Mathis has to hold it through. Boy, long run. Curtis Granderson covered a lot of ground. Ghost popped it up into center. That's a big out for Pettit. Yeah, and he picked it right off the grass, too. Off the end of the bat, he reads it, he comes in and watch where he catches it. Right before it hits the turf, and then any way you can get it back into the infield as quick as possible because Mathis had faked like he was going to tag up and score. So Randy gets it back in quickly. Now the Blue Jays have to come up with a clutch two out hit. Swisher does a good job. He cut that ball off and took a quick look at Mathis just to make sure he hadn't strayed too far. Brett Glory has struck out twice against Pettit. Yeah, you were talking about it. Mathis is going to act like he's going to go home and watch Swisher. He comes up with the cut and he's got a shot. But he doesn't want to take it right there. Yeah, if he comes up throwing, they're going to shot at Mathis at third. Always Swisher got Lori last night at second in the first inning. Pettit struck out Brett Lori, and both times he worked him away. Got him on a cutter the first time, fastball. The last time, Brett's been hitting the ball very well to right field of late. Got to figure that they might go back out there. 
Yep. With Pettit, it's not the type of pitch I think you should look for. I think it's the location because he's so good at locating his pitches. So you could go up there and look for the ball away early in the count if you feel comfortable doing that. You don't have to worry about the velocity anymore. Just pick an area. But with two strikes, Pettit has a distinct pattern. Yeah, he'll throw that cutter and slider. Slider 57% of the time. Now, this is where you can't look for the ball in a spot. You could possibly look for the slider. But he's got that ability to go inside and outside with it. There's that cutter down in the dirt. Tried to bury it. Well, and that's the thing. He can throw a cutter and he can throw a slider. But he can throw them to both sides of the plate. Right. And that's what really is a problem for a hitter. I mean, he, he got Brent Laurie the first time by looping that slider on the outside corner. Coming inside. Laurie takes the walk. Trying to get the red hot Rajay Davis to the plate. Davis has six straight hits. Including a home run in his first at bat this afternoon against Pettit. So Andy Pettit and Chris Stewart are going to have a little confidence. In every ball that he has hit for the last two days, he's hit hard. Early on, slider down it in. And it's in hard to left field. Just over the wall for the home run. That was his eighth of the season. He's also had a double as part of his six hits. Well, he's got to feel confident against Pettit. He's homered and single. Six straight hits for Rajay Davis. First and third. Two out. Don't stray too far at first base. I'm, sh I'm pretty sure the Blue Jays are not going to try and steal with Brett Moore. We got right side of the field open up for Rajay Davis just don't get picked off and he has shortened up his lead. David hits it on the ground Rodriguez takes it it's a fair ball in the dirt safe. Blue Jays have tied it. Rajay Davis has seven straight hits Mathis scores it's a 2-2 game. Stay hot <laughs> when you're in one of those streaks like Rajay Davis is everything you hit turns out to be a base hit. Hey Rod can't take a chance on if that ball's going to go fair or foul so he's got to field it and try and make the play just doesn't doesn't get a lot on the throw. Bounces it over to first base and Davis outruns the ball. Rodriguez recognized the speed of Davis knew that it was a do or die play and he didn't make it. Base hit for Rajay. Edwin Encarnacion, right man at the plate now. This is the guy you want hitting. They have to pitch to him. He has struck out twice against Pettit so far. Encarnacion wouldn't bite on that. Slider outside. That's what we're looking for. Bet it backed off that breaking ball. Yeah, change it up on him just a little bit through the timing of then going our seeing him off. Two and one, two outs, a two two ball game. Full count. 
Looks Laurie good. at second, Davis at first. They'll be off on the pitch. Much better job by the right-handed batters laying off that cutter slash slider down and in. It's not a strike. He's trying to get you to swing at that one. No reason for any indecision. Chris Stewart goes out to the mound to make sure he knows what Pettit wants to do. Full count, two outs. There go the runners. Swing and a hot shot. Gloved by Rodriguez at third. Cross the diamond and Connor Schoen is out. The inning is over, but Blue Jays tied. Rajay Davis with his seventh straight hit in the last two games is tied with two. Just five more games to the regular season. The season will end on Wednesday, October 3rd. The playoffs begin on the 5th. And Sportsnet will have all the action right through to the World Series. You can see it all right here. All the postseason baseball on Sportsnet. Don't you get a feeling that there's going to be a game on Thursday somewhere? Or Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pushing it back to Friday. Well, New York and Baltimore separated by a single game. The Tigers and the White Sox, it's a one game difference. But Texas and Oakland, Oakland's only three back of the Texas Rangers with five to go. Of course, all those games will be played later on this afternoon. Nunez is in a hole in two. And you look at the National League wild card picture. St. Louis has a three game lead for the second wild card spot over the Dodgers. Milwaukee is pretty much faded out the picture. They're five back with five to go. But the American League wild card race, now that's a different yeah, story. It's still going to be four teams, I think, for two spots. There's going to be two disappointments, I think, in the American League for the wild card. The Orioles are a game up on the Athletics for the first wild card spot. Oakland has a two game advantage over the Angels and three over Tampa Bay. How about Oakland? Last night they get Coco Crisp back in the lineup and he wasn't in the lineup till after batting practice. He'd been bothered by an eye infection and in his first at bat it's a lead off home run. There's a ball driven to center. Anthony goes a long run on the warning track makes a nice catch. We got a sense that that ball carried a little further than Ghost anticipated. He kind of drifted to that ball. He's got a little extra gear left. Yeah, still enough to make the play from center field. It's a low line drive, so the ball's going to take off on a day like today by Nunez. He hits it hard, and there's Ghost. 
started over and then had to go back just a little bit as that ball carried to left center field. But he's got plenty of speed to run that one back. Chris Stewart backhanded by Lauren. Two quick outs for Sean Hill. These are the type of players that Alex Anthopoulos wanted to put on a diamond when he took over a couple of years ago. Young, athletic players like Laurie at third base and the play by Ghost at center field. We've already seen a Danny Echeverria use his glove for a nice play. On this field, you have to have athletes. The speed of the ball is quicker on defense. You have to have speed in the outfield to run down balls in the gap. When you look back to the heyday of this organization, 92 93, back to back World Series championships, there were athletes everywhere. Everywhere. And, and not just the middle of the diamond. Kelly Gruber was an outstanding athlete. And he played third base. The guys in the corner. There's a little looper down the right side, and it's a foul. Joe Carter, right fielder, tremendous athlete. Of course, Devon White. Candy Maldonado in the outfield. John Alderud, he was very athletic around the bag at first. He handled everything flawlessly. Big target at first. 6 5 target for the infielders to shoot at across the diamond, and that led to back to back World Series championships. You've got to have athletes on this field. Jeter hits it on the ground. Escobar has it. Quick inning for Sean Hill. The Yankees go quietly. Helped out by a pretty good play in center field. Anthony Ghost runs down a line drive. That starts the inning. A one, two, three inning for Hill. John Farrell and what's happened is Derek Jeter started out this game as the DH now he takes over defensively at shortstop for Nunez which means the pitcher is now into the ball game in the lineup so the Yankees have given up their DH But it shows you the importance of Jeter's glove. He started Nunez at shortstop. Nunez has seven airs in the field. So in this 2 2 game, he said, you know what? I got enough pinch hitters on the bench. I need my captain in the field. That's all that is. Nunez, he's played six different positions for the Yankees this year. Yeah, he has seven errors, like you said, but four of them at shortstop. And you need your best defensive team out there in a tight ball game when you're trying to win. And another factor is this is probably the last inning for Andy Pennant. 
So when his spot comes up in the batting order. You know if you want a better defender. You know you might say well why isn't Jason Hicks in there. He went back to New York today. With a hip injury so he's not even here. So they have to put the DH into the ball game as you see Java Chamberlain start to warm up. You know Escobar the cleanup batter. 2 2 ball game. Andy Pettit. Came up a leadoff double to Jeff Mathis who scored on Rajay Davis's infield hit. And Escobar is going to take first leadoff walk. Fans entered the hit a home run with sharp contest on Facebook today. There are five ways to win this year, including a grand prize job for Canada's largest LCD TV, a 90 inch sharp octopus. Join Sharp Canada on Facebook today. Well, lead off man's aboard, Jan Gomes will step in. Gomes has walked and flied out. Just a little courtesy throw over to first base to see if the Blue Jays tip their hand what they're going to do here. Lead off walk, you got to figure out a way to get him in the scoring position. There's the square and a bunt, and it's a good one. Swisher, and nobody's at first. The Yankees got caught flat footed. That's Cano's responsibility, and he was late. First basemen are always taught go after the baseball. Your second baseman will be there for you. That time, Cano not anticipating that Gomes would bunt. Cannot get over. You can see he was shaded up the middle. And no chance to get over there in that situation. Perfectly placed as Swisher comes to get it. There's nobody there to throw it to. Tony is going to have a hit. Just the fifth hit for the Blue Jays. Now it's first and second. Tony Pena, the bench coach, uh, contemplating whether or not Sierra will be asked to bunt. I would have to guess that he hasn't won it all season long, Sierra. So you've got to let him swing away here. And it's a 2 2 game. I agree with that. Now he's bunting and takes a straight. You know, the problem with that is you know, managers will always put players in a position where they can succeed. And if Sierra is not a bunter, Brian Butterfield is going to go down and talk to him now. So I was a little surprised that he was bunting. Probably hasn't run it all year long in the minor leagues. We say, well, he's done it down in batting practice and the whole thing. It's a little bit different than doing it in a game. So, as a manager, you say, how can he best help me? Let him swing away. Hit a three-run homer. Yeah, that's the best way you can help the manager. <laughs> that would help him a lot. Nobody out. Blue Jays threatening against Andy Pettit and the Yanks. Bottom of the six. Good ball game. Ricky Romero started and left because of an apparent injury. He went three innings. Sean Hill has come on and pitched good relief. That is not really sure. And he asked the pitcher to come out and talk things over. Jabba Chamberlain's in the Yankees bullpen and he is ready. He's standing by. And is keeping an eye on Andy Pettit. Pettit. They were hopeful of getting 80 or 95 to 100 pitches out of Pettit this afternoon. He's thrown 90. Sierra swinging away and hits it into center. Escobar tagging it second. Granderson's go to second and he doesn't go. Oh no. Oh, no. He broke and Granderson was going to concede third. And Escobar faked and took his eye off the throw. If he runs with his head up, he walks to third. Yeah, he was conceding. Granderson and the Yankees were conceding third base, figuring that the ball was going to be deep enough for Escobar. And he could make this. It's deep enough. And Granderson doesn't have the greatest of arms. Watch where he throws it up to keep the bases, or excuse me, the double play in order. And Escobar stopped. Yeah, he could have made that. Yeah, and once that ball hits to second, I mean, you're going to waltz over to third. 
But he did the right thing. He went back and he tagged up. He broke the third. But you keep your eye on where the throw's going. And then you make a judgment as to whether or not you can advance. So that's another 90 feet that the Blue Jays don't get. Now Jeff Mathis, who doubled in his last hit bat, will step in. One out. Well, you can score so many different ways from third base with less than two outs. Now it's going to take a base hit. One out. Mathis is one for two. Boy, you talk about Joe Girardi trusting Andy Pettit. This is a great example of it. Making his third start since coming off the DL. Of course, Girardi was Pettit's catcher <laughs> at one point. Now he's the manager. How about that? Well, he knows that if he makes a good pitch, he can get the ball on the ground, and that's what they're looking for. There's a drive to center field. This ball is hit hard. Granderson makes the catch. Escobar goes back. This time he'll tag, but right there is a perfect example of how you score. Had he been at third, he scores easily. Yeah, he knows. He knows he could have tagged up. It was a little bit too late, and he would have walked to him on that one. But what a play by Granderson in left field as he bails out Pettit. This looked like a sure double and two runs as Mathis, who doubled last time up, just can't get the ball over Granderson's head as he runs it down. The deepest part of the ballpark in left center field saves a run and gets it back in. So Andy Pettit will turn the ball over to the bullpen. Pettit goes five and two thirds. Jamit Chamberlain in the face of Danny Echeverria when we come back. Responsible for the two base runners on Java Chamberlain into the game for the 21st time this season and he's starting to round into the four of the Java Chamberlain that we saw a few years ago. He's got the good heater and the good slider and now he's starting to get his command back to six walks this year. He's also not allowed an earned run over his last nine appearances. Good slider now if you're the runner now for Escobar at third base. You got to anticipate a ball in the dirt. Chamberlain will go for the strikeout and yank one of those sliders, trying to throw it hard. So you got to anticipate that ball in the dirt. So Gomes is at first. He had a bunt single. Escobar let it off for the walk. He is at third base. Two outs. Sabani Echeverria. Blue Jay second baseman has grounded out twice. Jabba Chamberlain. It's a good time to get that 
hit streak and continue that hit streak that Echeverria has. Goes after the first pitch that ball came up and hit him in the helmet. Echeverria faced Java Chamberlain in New York. He has a base hit off of him. Oh, hit him on the side of the face. Didn't yeah. even hit his helmet. And exposed side as it bounces up, hits him in the cheek. 2 2 ball game. Java Chamberlain just starting to get into form. Coming back from a dislocated ankle in spring training, also coming back from Tommy John surgery a year ago. Fly ball to right, Ichiro back. This ball is carried. The ball's off the wall. Escobar is in. John Gomes is being stopped at third. Now Swiss is going to throw behind him, and he is out. Oh man! Another base running mistake with two outs. Echeverria drives the ball off the wall, and Swisher, always alert, gets out of the inning by a heads-up play. Echeverria gives the Blue Jays a lead with the ball off the wall, but Swisher ends the inning with a good throw to third. a lead with a double off the wall. Jan Gomes is running toward third. Broderfield is stopping him right there before he hits the bag. That's plenty of time for Gomes to stop. But, By the time he stops, it's way too late. Yeah, and the alert Yankees, ever alert Yankees, throw behind and get the runner at third base. A big out recorded by their defense. New pitcher for the Blue Jays is Brad Lincoln. Jays have a 3 2 lead, top of the seventh. A couple of more base running mistakes by the Blue Jays. And remember in spring training, I said that's the one area where they really want to do a better job of. Ichiro Suzuki starts it off with a base hit to left. And at the beginning of the season, I thought the base running was much improved from last year. But not lately. Well, what happens, in the beginning of the season, the ball club was playing good baseball. They were getting good pitching, and all those good base running plays were right in front of you, and they had an impact on winning and losing. Then you start to lose, and everybody loses their focus. They're not paying attention. There have been a million mental mistakes on the bases, and it's costly. Alex Rodriguez. He's walked twice and hit into a fielder's choice. Hey, 
Rodriguez asked for time before he stepped out of the box. Mike Everett, the home plate umpire. Granted time. Sean Hill in his first relief appearance in his big league career goes three innings. Did not allow a hit. He is the pitcher of record. Hill's last win in the big league came September 23, 2010. Right here at Rogers Center against Seattle. I was here. I saw. It. Yeah, great job. Three innings. He writes the ship out of that bullpen. Two walks, no strikeouts. And now a chance. Giving them a chance to win this game. Do it oh and math is not going to wait any longer. You're going to go out and talk to Brad Lincoln. Mathis understands this Yankees team. You got to put your head. Put them into a swing mode. You cannot afford experienced batters to hit with the count in their favor. What a good ball game. Andy Pettit goes five and two thirds. He is charged with the third Blue Jays run. So he is currently on the hook for the loss. But we are a long way from being over. Andy Pettit, his third start since coming off the disabled list, goes five and two thirds. Five hits, three earned runs. He walked three and struck out four, and his games go just one below the average at 48. Thought he was better than the last time we saw him. And we saw him in his first start coming off the disabled list back in New York. He drew a Suzuki with a leadoff single. He's two for four this afternoon. D Rock can't catch up with that one. He hasn't homered since September the 14th. Doesn't have an extra base hit in his last 12 games. So I think what Jeff Mathis went out there to talk to Lincoln was look, we're going to feed this guy fastballs. We're going to try and pitch him inside. We're going to try and jam him up where he can't extend and knock the ball out of the ballpark. Take our chances with him inside. Two and two. Strike three call. He went outside, caught the corner, Rodriguez. With a questioning look to Mike Everett. I think he established fastball inside for strike one and strike two. And that then opens up the outside. Right there, fastball down. And that fastball he can't pull the trigger on. Lincoln gives up a single and strikes out A Rod, turns things over to left hander and loop into the ball game to take on Robinson Cano.
single. On a little looper into center field that drove in a run. That was in the eighth inning. And I think if you're Robinson Cano, get used to this matchup right here over the next few years. You're probably going to see her loop a lot. Good numbers against the left handers in his very short career loop versus the lefty. This is the fifth time that he has faced Cano in his young career. The most of any Yankee. Breaking ball strike Ichiro was headed back to first base. He wasn't sure what loop was going to do. Cano has been on base twice. He had a sack fly in the first, singled in the third, and reached on an air in the fifth. Ichiro Suzuki with the leadoff single. Suzuki has 28 stolen bases and he represents the tying run. Got a big lead. Way outside. Yeah, that big lead is a one way lead, I think, for Suzuki. Just doesn't have it down just yet. Aaron Loops move. Uh, he'll figure it out. Give him a couple of pitches. He has shortened his lead by about a foot. He was going back to the bag again as he's not really sure about Luke. Luke doesn't have a great move. We haven't seen him really come up with that great move to first, but. He is tough to read. It yeah. just looks like he's coming to first all the time. He's left handed and he hangs that leg up there a long time. Doesn't cross that imaginary line behind the pitcher's mouth. This doesn't give you any read on which way he's going. Cano lays off the breaking ball. Well, Schreiber said he didn't go. Two balls, two strikes. Blue Jays have a 3 2 lead. Yankees batting in the center. There's the move, and that's about it. Not much better than that, much more deceptive than that. But because he has that crossfire delivery. He's always leaning a little bit toward first. Yeah, it almost always looks like he's going over to first base. And then he just drops down and goes home. Nick Swisher is on deck. Swisher is a switch hitter, of course. Swisher is perfect on the day. Two hits and a walk. There goes Ichiro, and the throw to second is a good one. Escobar puts the tag on him, and Ichiro went on the first move of Loop, and it was to first base. Looks like he might have been guessing that he was going to go on towards home plate, so he goes on the first move. Loop sees it, and then goes over to first base. It's a big out for the Blue Jays as they pick Ichiro off. First base. Jan Gomes made a strong throw to the shortstop. And you remember earlier in the game, he bounced the ball. And that Escobar had to make a play on, and Cano, he can hit. Enter the train like the Blue Jays Brett Laurie contest today at BlueJays.com. Presented by Sport Check. Your better starts here. Robinson Cano is seventh hit of the series. But fortunately for the Blue Jays, Ichiro Suzuki's caught stealing, so there are now two outs. Nick Swisher bats as a right handed hitter against Aaron Luke. 
Swisher walked against Sean Hill. This is lifted into right. Long run for Sierra. He gets there, and the inning is over. Now the Blue Jays have a 3-2 lead. Is there something bad in the bottom of the seventh? It'll be Anthony Ghost, the number nine hitter. Then back to the top of the order. Brett Laurie and the red-hot Rajay Davis. Take place Monday, October 1st. It begins with a 707 ninth game. Tuesday and Wednesday, also night games. The Minnesota Twins are in town to wrap up the 2012 season. Call the Blue Jays for Twins tickets at 416 341 1234. You can always log on to bluejays.com to order your tickets or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Justin Morneau, Scott Diamond, Joe Mallon here with the Twins on Monday, the final series of the season. 36,139 in attendance, and that pushes the Blue Jays over the 2 million mark for the season. Blue Jays have drawn 2,022,187 this year. Anthony Ghost goes after that first pitch, and there's the season attendance. And solid. Very solid. Middle of the pack. And. Off to a great start. Certainly the disappointing second half of the season didn't do much to inspire the attendance. But the average home attendance right at 26,000 for the Blue Jays, which is excellent. Yankees, Texas, Angels, Boston, Detroit, Minnesota, and then Baltimore, Toronto in the American League. Anthony Ghost, ball on a strike. Chamberlain with that curveball miss. You know, it's going to get around the league now that these young players, notably Ghost and Echeverria, they're not biting on that curveball anymore, that breaking ball. They have had much better at bats in the last week or so. They're really waiting for something to hit. We got a pretty good pitch to hit right there and fouls it right off. The catcher, two and two. Yankees have out hit the Blue Jays 8 6, but Toronto has a one run lead at 3 2. Java Chamberlain came into the ball game and gave up an RBI double to Adani Echeverria. The Yankees have relinquished their DH. Chopper Chamberlain is in the eighth spot in the batting order. Right hander is Cody Epley. The left hander is Boone Logan. The pitcher's spot is three batters away. Close knew it. Chamberlain gets the breaking ball over. 
first down of the inning. You know, ideally, they like to get Chamberlain to get through the sitting one, two, three, where they don't need to make a pitching change and then pitch hit for him in the eighth inning. Don't want to have to burn a pitcher just for one batter here or one batter there. Brett Lori walked his last time up. It was a big walk. It came against Andy Pettit. He'd struck out twice in his first two at bats. But he walked to keep the inning alive, and that set the table for Rajay Davis. Yeah, a 3 2 breaking ball that Pettit tried on. Lori and he learned something after the first two at bats. He learned to lay off of that one, anticipating getting a breaking ball. We mentioned the attendance over the two million mark a year ago. The Blue Jays drew one million eight hundred and eighteen thousand fans, so they have improved upon that. That Lori is called out. He strikes out for a third time. Jobber Chamberlain with back to back strike counts this inning. That time, fastball down and away. And the fastball's back. Lori's got an argument there. That one looked like it might have been underneath the knees. You'll be able to tell from this angle right here. Too close to take. Bottom of the strike zone is the hollow of that knee. Rajay Davis with seven straight hits. He is one off the franchise record for consecutive hits. Eight hits, and it's been done multiple times. Rance Molnix did it first back in 84. He had eight straight hits. Paul Molitor in 95. Tony Fernandez in 99. Adam Lind most recently had eight straight hits June 3rd and 4th of 2009. So Rajay Davis is just one hit away from tying the franchise mark for consecutive base hits. Oh and two. The streak comes to an end. Java Chamberlain strikes out the side. We'll go to the eighth. The Blue Jays clinging to a one run lead. Jay's bullpen has been good this afternoon. Steve Delabar will try to continue that trend as he comes on to start the eighth inning. He's taken over in that eighth inning. Giving John Terrell a great option since he was a flyer from Seattle. 24 games with Toronto. The opponents hitting under 200 against Steve. Uh, Righty's just 143. On the season, 200. Those were inflated when he was with Seattle. He's Pretty much junked that slider against the right-handers fastball splitter. 
combination and take a look at those strikeouts per nine innings 12.7 excellent now, especially against the Yankees you don't want them to put it in play and you certainly don't want them to walk to get on base the Banyas is on deck Curtis Granderson takes a first pitch strike Quickly ahead, 0 and 2. Delabar with a splitter. It's a little different from some of the other split finger fastballs that we've seen from guys around the league. Delabar throws his hard and gets a lot of strikeouts with it. A three pitch strikeout, first out of the inning. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Raul Labanez pinch hit for Andrew Jones in the fifth. And he hit into a double play. Eric Chavez has grabbed the bat. He has come out on deck. That's the pitcher spot. Java Chamberlain is in the eighth spot. The Yankees have given up their DH this afternoon. So that's good fastball right at the knees. Derek Jeter started the game as the DH. He came into the game defensively in the bottom of the sixth. So the Yankees lose their DH. The pitcher is now batting in the eighth spot. And when you've got a Big bench, a lot of players, and a, and a long line of pitchers out in that bullpen. You can bring your DH in if you have to. They probably wouldn't have done that had Jason Nix been available. Yes, I agree. Nix is back in New York. He's having problems with his hip. He went back for an examination. One and two, one out. On the ground, Jan Gomes, that's a fair ball. He gets on it and can't make a play. That ball hit right on the chalk line. Gomes tried to take the short half. He knocked it down, and then he went to grab it with his bare hand. He couldn't make the play. There's a time and a place where you have to be aggressive on the baseball. This isn't one of them. You can lay back. Banyas doesn't run that well. You can lay back, catch the ball on the big hop, and still have plenty of time to race to the bag and get the out. He likes to play it on that in-between hop. And when you do that, you have no idea where that ball is going to bounce. It's going to come up on you, hit you in the chest. And then it's a do-or-die play at first base. Calabar and Banez holding each other up, making sure nobody stumbles and falls down. There's one out. Well, you're right. And that's just a situation of inexperience. Yeah. You're excited. You're leading the Yankees. Yankees are a game ahead. You want to make the play, but with a little more experience, you recognize you got plenty of time. Just play that big hop. Chavez is the pinch hitter. Brett Gardner is the pinch runner at first. Chavez takes one upstairs. Gardner has been limited to defensive play and pinch running coming back from an elbow injury but he can fly 49 stolen bases last year and it looked like he might have been leaning well he'd been chomping at the bit to make a contribution now you see Russell Martin has grabbed the bat appears that he's going to hit for Chris Stewart Granderson has a bigger lead look at that right foot Delabar was just going to hold yeah. and not throw it. See if Granderson wouldn't get antsy. Yeah, and he was going to hold it that whole time until Chavez, the batter, called timeout. Gardner, at first, watch his right foot, how he gets that foot opened up so he can have a 
good first move towards second. There he goes. Swing and a miss. Throw to second base. And what a play by Escobar. He took the short hop. Girardi's going to argue the call. Tim Welke, the crew chief, is the second base umpire. But Escobar really hung in there. That's a tough play for a middle infielder to hang in and take the short hop because the momentum of the glove goes up. It is coming up. you got to stay in there. You know you're going to get hit. Ball bounced down to second base. He stays down. Here comes the runner into him. And not from that replay there, Blue Jays might have gotten a break. Jeff Mathis applauding that play by Escobar, but it looked like he got his hand in there. So Gardner is out. It's two and one on Chavez. Actually, it's one and one, and now it's one and two. Let's take a look at it one more time as Escobar has to go up and then come back down. And notice where he tagged him. And if you're thinking, well, he knocked his hand off, but I think the leg was still engaged to the bag. It never came off. But the Blue Jays will take it, and Delabar ends up with a 1-2-3 inning. A couple of strikeouts, and Delabar does his job. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Blue Jays lead it by one. Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Welcome back to Rogers Center. Jeff Mathis throws out the pinch runner. Brett Gardner with an assist by the shortstop, Yunel Escobar, who took the short hop throw and put the tag on Gardner. Cody Epley will come into the ball game to start the eighth inning. Epley. Appearing in his 58th game, job at Chamberlain struck out the side in the seventh. That is by far the most games that Epley has pitched in in his career. This is his coming out season. Spent a little time with the Texas Rangers last year, got into 10 games, which was his career high. And now Joe Girardi has used him a lot, and he has come through. Lefties 346, righties 224, pretty good. Brent Gardner stays in the ball game. And will take over in left field. But Gardner may have beaten the throw to second. Blue Jays have gotten the break. Bottom of the eighth inning. Edwin Encarnacion has gone 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. Well, the Blue Jays bullpen has been tough. Sean Hill started it. Hill went three innings in relief of Ricky Romero, who left with an injury. And we've never been updated on the extent of the injury to Romero. But he left after three innings. It looked like a leg injury. Five ball to right. Suzuki. 
One down. You know, Escobar, he walked and scored in the sixth. He scored the go ahead run. A Danny Echeverria hit a ball off the wall in right to drive home Escobar. For Echeverria, that extended his hit streak to 10 games. There's a shot right past the pitcher into center. Well, players will tell you they don't watch the scoreboard, but I bet you some of them are going to watch the television. Boston will be at Baltimore. Chris Tillman threw eight innings of one hit ball last night as the Orioles won the opener in that series. It'll be game two of that series. Steve Johnson, the young right hander, will go up against Felix Dubron. It all starts tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 p.m. Pacific. Game two. Boston Baltimore right here on Sportsnet. Girardi just waiting to see if the lefty is ready because the Blue Jays have brought a pinch hitter into the ball game. So Girardi gets the signal that the lefty Boone Logan is ready. He is out to the mound. Now it's a cat and mouse game. Adam Lind had been announced into the ball game, so Joe Girardi will counter that move with the left-hander. Boone Logan will come in when we come back. Been a busy guy this year. Logan making his 78th appearance of the season. And he and Adam Lynn have met a lot. <laughs> they certainly have those 77 games. Now 78. A career high for Boone Logan. He's done a good job as being one of those lefties out of the bullpen. 11 strikeouts per nine innings. Good hard fastball. Good sharp breaking ball. And he's used it very effectively against Adam Lynn in his career. It is Junior Jays Saturday, the final final Junior Jays Saturday of the season, and good crowd on him. Adam Lynn comes off the bench. He is batting for Jan Gomes, the first baseman. Yunel Escobar at first with the single. One down. Lind is one for eleven against Boone Logan, as we mentioned. These two have met a lot. Play against your AL East rivals, and when you have a special left-hander in that bullpen as a power hitter like Lynn, you're going to see him a lot. Yeah, they're going to come in late in the ball game. For years, it was Randy Choke with Tampa Bay. Now it's Jake McGee who's taking over that role whenever we face the Rays. And when we face the Yankees, it's been Boone Logan. And I'm sure when we play the Orioles. All those times, Brian Mattis will be getting Adam Lynn late in ball games. It's not the splits, which are a little exceptional. You would think that Logan might dominate left-handers a little better. 
That's not been the case this season. You know, Escobar with a one out single, he stands at first. And then lays off that inside pitch. Peel is denied. Paul Schneider said no swing. Three and one count. Blue Jays would love a little cushion here. Looking ahead to the top of the ninth, number nine hitter is scheduled to start it off. Chris Stewart, the catcher. Ball strike, full count. Boone Logan in relief of Cody Epley. Lind pinch hitting for Jan Gomes. Lind will take a walk. They went with a breaking ball, and Logan missed. Well, a couple of big runs on base. Joe Girardi is pacing in the Yankee dugout. Trying to decide if Robertson is ready. See him talking to his pitching coach, Larry Rothschild. If he wants to bring in the right hand, there's Robertson. Well, the Blue Jays have Rasmus on deck and Kelly Johnson on deck, a couple of left handers. So now, very deliberately, he walks out and calls for David Robertson. So Girardi will go to the right hander who has been so good David Robertson Sierra is the scheduled batter the chess game continues here at Rogers Center Blue Jays clinging to a one run lead. For Jan Gomes, Boone Logan came in and walked Lynn. Now, with Sierra, the scheduled batter, Girardi goes to the right hander, David Robertson. And they need strikeouts. And that's one thing that the Yankee bullpen can deliver is a lot of strikeouts. We saw Boone Logan's. Take a look at David Robertson's almost 12 per nine innings. That the Yankee bullpen is second in the American League in strikeouts per nine innings. They're averaging almost a strikeout an inning. So Robertson in and the Blue Jays elect not to pinch hit for Moises Sierra. Kobe Rasmus is 0 for 5 against David Robertson. Sierra, first and second, one out. Takes a first pitch strength. Doubled off at second is Escobar. Robertson gets out of it, but Sierra hit it right on the button. But right at the third baseman, 
Alex Rodriguez. We'll go to the ninth. The Blue Jays have a 3-2 lead. Casey Jansen on trying to close it out. Ball game to face David Robertson, and he hits a bullet right to the third baseman, Alex Rodriguez, who doubles up Escobar. Blue Jays with another base running mistake, and you can't hit it any better, but you can't direct it. All you can do is have good at bats. He did his thing, he hit it hard, just right at A Rob. So Casey Jansen into the ball game. Russell Martin. In the batter's box is a pinch hitter for Chris Stewart to catch her. Jansen delivers a first pitch strike. Martin with a three run home run in the ball game last night off Jason Fraser. Two perfect pitches. Can't hit those. You can't hit them hard when you're throwing it out there. You might be able to foul it off or hit a weak ground ball. Can't do a lot with it. Breaking ball. Casey Jansen into the ball game. Looking for his 21st save of the season. You know, and he hasn't had a save opportunity. Since September the 9th. And that's how it's been going for the Blue Jays. They've been either up by a lot or or down by a lot. So Jansen just hasn't had the opportunity. Great three call. Casey Jansen paints the outside corner with a fastball. He got ahead of Martin with two fastballs right in the same spot and gets the strikeout. Again, not a lot you can do with that. Not where he threw it. And because Jansen hasn't had a lot of save opportunities in the last couple of weeks, he's just been coming into the ball game to get work. And he really hasn't been as sharp. He's given up a few runs in his last couple of outings, but if that first at bat is any indication, he's back. Derek Jeter. Plays off the high fastball. Laz Diaz down at first and no swing. Jeter with the count in his favor, 1 0. He's got that outside corner zeroed in. Looks like he's got a little extra on his fastball, too. Head to head against Casey Jansen. Jeter just won for 14. The one hit was a homer. Ball and a strike. Breaking ball popped up. Second baseman of Danny Echeverria. Two down.
Those of you who are tuning in for UFC Live, it's coming up right after the game. Hopefully, that's just one batter away. Ichiro Suzuki, two hits in four trips to the plate. Singled in his last at bat. First pitch breaking ball for a stuff. It's one area where Jansen's been a lot better this year, I think, against left handers. There are his numbers, Ichiro's numbers versus Jansen. Casey's actually pitched better against the left handers this year than he has against the right handers. Just a 171 average. And I think that backdoor breaking ball cutter has been a big pitch for him against the left handers. There it is. One and two. Yankees down to their last strike. Ichiro chops it to short. Infield base hit. Everybody has to shorten up with two strikes against Ichiro. Just that half swing. It's a do or die play again for Escobar, and he can't come up with the play. Yeah, and that's all he had there, just to try to backhand it, grab it. Once Ichiro chopped it off home plate, it was academic. Yeah. And you got to know that you got to shorten up with two strikes because he's just going to be running out of that box and just flicking his wrist at that ball. Watch this swing. Flicks the bat at him. <laughs> he's going towards first base. And he's going to beat it out. Three hits for Suzuki. He represents the tying run at first two outs. Alex Rodriguez. This should do it. Anthony Ghost, Blue Jays will win it. Casey Jansen, his 21st save of the season. What a good ball game by the Blue Jays. Sean Hill gets his first win since 2010. We'll be here tomorrow for the series wrap-up. Stay tuned. Blue Jays connect to coming right up.